<risa> Hola, no hablo mucho español. Estoy muy feliz. That is the sultry Spanish accent of one Conor Gallagher, a man who, though it's hard to tell, from his incredible, intense Spanish lessons he's been taking, was not born on the Iberian Peninsula, no. He moved there mere weeks ago from Chelsea Football Club and already speaks more Spanish than Gareth Bale did while he was at Real Madrid. This digital episode of European Nights is sponsored by our great friends at New Balance, a brand that, you know, I truly adore. They are behind the boot, giving players total control of the ball and the game, the Tequila. Mm, touch. Perfected. Conor Gallagher has become the newest member of Atletico Madrid. Sadly, this is one Gallagher who won't be joining the Oasis reunion. Senya Gallagher was one of many new signings for the Atletico. Faithful to celebrate Madrid's eternal little brother has had a summer of splashy spending. Aside from the $45 million they spent on Gallagher, there was the $103 million, including incentives that they dropped to nab quite effervescent. Argentine forward Julian Alvarez from Manchester City. Uh, then there was also another roughly $38 million spent to steal Robin Le Normand from Real Sociedad. Uh, sounds French, but is a stalwart of a centre-back who just hoisted the Euros trophy with Spain. Not to mention the more than $35 million keep up here that they spent on the Norwegian international Alexander Surlorth. A man who sounds like a Pokemon character, but is in fact quite a good striker. Good enough, in fact, to be La Liga's second top scorer last season. He netted 23 goals for Villarreal. This is all this summer, people. Let's not forget the players uh, who are returning, including Slovenian brick wall of goalkeeper Jan Oblak, Uruguay's Jose Maria Jimenez, and the man of a million haircuts, Antoine Griezmann. When it was all said and done, Atletico had retooled their entire squad to the tune of over $220 million, which is about as much as they spent in the past half decade combined. Rory, what is going on? What is motivating Atletico to just splurge all of this cash now? And like MC Hammer buying a private jet, all of this spending begs a simple question. How are they affording this? And it's a great question in the context of, of La Liga, where obviously the, the cost control measures, uh, what in, Brit- in Britain in, in the Premier League we know as PSR, the Spanish equivalent, are much more strict. They are still preventing Barca or making it very difficult for Barcelona to register players. They have really, really kind of taken financial control seriously in Spain. And it's other than Real Madrid... We've not seen a Spanish team do this for, for quite a long time, particularly Atletico, who still, I think, have about 500 million euros of debt. Um, they they were not a team at the start of the summer that you looked at and thought, they're in a position to spend a lot of money. There's a few things going on. One is 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 sporting, I guess. They, um, they've they released or sold for relatively small sums of money quite a lot of their, their high earners this summer. Alvaro Mur- Murata going to AC Milan is, is one of the best examples. They've They've cleared a lot of space on their wage bill um, and they've brought in some funds from those those deals, which cleared up a little bit of leeway to spend some money. Um, I think they probably felt they hadn't spent a vast amount in recent years. So I, I guess they might have a little bit saved up effectively. You know, they were probably due a, a relatively large outlay at some point. Um, there, there has been a new share issue. in uh, the, the, There's two companies that kind of control the majority of Atletico. And they've both bought more shares, which means they've, they've pumped equity into the club, which helps the financial situation. And there is a theory that they are they're currently building a new training ground next to the stadium, which is kind of in the north of Madrid and there's nothing really around it. The current training ground is in quite a nice part of Madrid, so they are presumably sitting on a little bit of a real estate deal there. And it may well be that, they, that they've got a plan in place for that and they therefore feel they can afford to retool the squad. Even so, none of it makes a vast amount of sense. The one thing that did kind of make it feel a little bit more normal was when they, on the last day of August, sold Joao Felix to Chelsea for $60 million. That felt more like they were saying, OK, we've gone a bit far. Let's get some money back now. Um, but in terms of the players they've signed, it's really hard to, to quibble. They, they are really smart signings. You know, Julian Alvarez in particular is an incredibly exciting signing for a team like Atletico Madrid. They've not had a player up front of that quality since Luis Suarez left. Um, he is the sort of player that will, I think, thrive at Atletico Madrid, the sort of hero the club will want. 
He'll have An- Antoine Griezmann, the world's greatest Olympic superfan, providing him with chances. I think that is is an enticing prospect. Conor Gallagher, I think, will will go over well in Spain. He's got the work rate that Atletico fans will really appreciate. Robin Lenormand is is not a spectacular centre half, but he is a very steady presence. Stefan Savic, one of the great links to that, to the great Simeone sides that made Champions League finals. He's gone to Turkey, and again, that saves them money on the on the wage bill. Um, Lenormand has, is a proven presence, at least in in La Liga how he adapts to the Champions League. He was there for Sociedad last season, but how he adapts to the Champions League, I'm not entirely sure. But it looks like a much stronger and crucially a kind of a younger Atletico Madrid side than than we've seen in recent years. So I just wonder whether they they felt as though it was the time was kind of right to go for it a bit, having spent the last few years being relatively parsimonious. Um, well, God, as you hinted, Atletico may be attempting to spend like Real Madrid, their neighbours who always cast a bernabeu size shadow over the city. Atleti, the big point is they're not earning like Real. Atletico's most recently released financial reports. Damn, financial reports are so pesky. Why do we have to have them? From the 2022-23 season, show them taking in an annual income of approximately £395 million. Uh, under half as much as the big boys Barcelona and Real. That's without accounting for the club's net financial debt of over $565 million. And as that debt indicates, this is not a club known for its history of, let's just say, financial stability and level-headed ownership. No, this is the club built in the image of its former bombastic, dramatic owner, Jesus Hill, who became president of Atletico in 1987 and owner in 1992 until he was forced to resign following a conviction for his illegal use of Atletico funds. Heel is a man with a laundry list of actions so long uh, and slightly crazed it gives Antonio Brown pause, a list which includes punching an opposing team's president on live television, requiring managers to spy on players, requiring them to, uh, publicly wishing his team's plane would crash. That's quite a move, quite a choice. Multiple arrests and convictions, one of which was pardoned by Generalissimo Francisco Franco himself, I crap you not, and perhaps most famously being elected mayor of the celebrity-filled seaside town of Marbella, literally uh, bulldozing the previous mayor's home and subsequently misappropriating the town's funds um, to be Atletico Madrid's kit sponsor. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing to see here. The results on the field were as chaotic as his ownership was off it. What a surprise. Team won La Liga and Copa del Rey double in 95-96 and then was shockingly subsequently relegated a mere four years later. Managers discarded like slices of spoiled Hamon Iberico. The team racked up debt from its disorganised finances, but perhaps the most long-lasting impact of Hill's ownership is how it began. Of the many crimes that he committed, while owner of Atletico, Hill, along with his son Miguel Angel Hill Marin, and film producer Enrique Cerezo, were found to have fraudulently acquired their ownership shares in the first place. <laughs> what a surprise! But the statute of limitations prevented the case from being prosecuted, so Hill's legacy at the club did not end with his death in 2004 when he passed the team along. The aforementioned Hill Marin and Cherezo, who are still, to this day, Atletico CEO and president, respectively, despite having acquired the club in totally illegal, utterly dodgy fashion. It's the Atletico way. So, Rory, that was a lot. It was really a complete and utter police crime blotter. So, enlighten us. What is the internal state of Atletico like today? How do Hill Marin and Cherezo compare uh, to Daddy Jesus Hill? Uh, and is Atletico summer a big spending, a relic of that chaotic past with a club uh, just lurching towards another financial catastrophe? Or is there a secret hidden plan? Please let there be a secret hidden plan that they've got up their sleeve. I think Hill Marine is, is a lot more circumspect than his dad. I think that's probably fair to say he's not quite as bombastic. And Serezo has always struck me as being... He's a very t- t- sort of twinkly-eyed quite pleasant man i'm not sure whether that, that everyone who has dealings with him would say that but he's he's a he's kind of a i don't want to say a figurehead there's a statesman like quality to serato which i think they atletico use because they are conscious that they want to be a much more modern sort of sports 
business effectively than than maybe their historic traditional role suggests. Obviously, the the calder on their old stadium was this cr- great hulking, crumbling ruin in, in the south of Madrid, with the motorway running underneath one stand, and it always felt a little bit like it was. I don't know, like the club's portrait in the attic almost. It was that it kind of indicated the soul of Atletico was slightly hiddledy piddledy, a little bit Jerry rigged, not quite as slick or as sleek or as modern as Real Madrid up the road. Since the move to um, the Wanda Metropolitana, which is every inch the modern super stadium, Atletico, I think, want to be seen as a much greater part of the European elite. They were part of the, um, the, the, the Super League, the ultimate badge of honour for all of Europe's super clubs. Were you invited? To the to football's ultimate illegal gathering, um, and Atletico were they want to be seen as a, a as a responsible, forward thinking, progressive, well run club because in football's kind of modern ecosystem, there's not really a, a business advantage to being the lovable and chaotic underdog. So I think they they try and run themselves in a much more level headed way. Whether this summer's expenditure is is harking back to to Hazus Heels more adventurous spending sprees I don't think so it feels like it's been done a little bit more scientifically as I say it's hard to argue with the players they've signed um, they have they have recouped some of the money they've 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 um, they've spent and the other thing that's interesting about Atletico is the ownership model that Hilmarin and Sarezo own a proportion I think a majority but then there's an Israeli investment firm that owns a proportion and there's an American investment firm that owns a proportion as well I would suggest that Atletico were probably quite well placed to be taken over, either by one of the two investors who were already on board or by somebody else. And I wonder whether this might be... You know when you, you're selling your house, Rog, and you're trying to do the kitchen up because you want to make it more appealing? <laughs> I just wonder whether Julian Alvarez is the new French dresser. Oh, my God. Conor Gallagher is the air fryer. Is that what you're telling me? Um, God, Conor Gallagher would love bite your arm off to be your air fryer. Whatever the backroom dealings of Atletico may be, a pillar of stability has come to the club over the past decade plus under the leadership of a gent who's got more fire than a Hot Ones interview, more black clothing than a teenage metalhead. You know him. You love him. Diego Simeone. Um, Under him, the team has won two La Liga titles. Oh, God bless El Cholo, as well as a Copa del Rey and two Europa Leagues. They've also qualified for the Champions League 11 seasons in a row, which is some accomplishment, including two agonising. I'm just whispering this, Atletico fans. I know how painful this is. Runner-up finishes to who else? Bloody Real Madrid in 2014 and 16. And last year, their penchant for Champions League heartbreak continued with Atletico choking away a 70th minute fourth three aggregate lead against Borussia Dortmund in the quarterfinals. Once again, sent home in anguish and torment, yet still Rory, despite their sordid history, financial woes and big game suffering, Atletico have managed to accomplish everything under Diego Simeone, but win a Champions League trophy. This was a club that a mere two years before Simeone took over, departing manager Abel Resino called, yes, a madhouse. So what does Simeone bring to the Atletico touchline that was missing from previous managers? Does he still have it this deep in to his managerial tenure? And where do they go from here besides hanging around the top flight long enough to pick up the old trophy or two whenever Barca or Real Madrid trip up? So my theory on this would be, Rog, after all this time, that Atletico was always a club that gathered itself around a player. So the player would be generally a kind of a talismanic, totemic figure in the mould of the I mean the, the 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 one that from my childhood or my my teenage years that kind of stands out is Kiko Narvaez, who was a striker with curly hair, wore the number nine, scored lots and lots of goals, and Atletico was kind of Kiko's team. Kiko was the the embodiment of atletismo. And then after Kiko retired, it was Fernando Torres for a while before he signed for Liverpool. And then they kind of dwindled for a while because they didn't have that player to gather around. What Simeone did was turn the manager into that figure. Managers at Atletico had always been disposable kind of characters, people getting in the way of the star player, not not providing the foundations for Kiko to deliver whatever he needed to deliver or to you know to keep Torres at the club. Um, Simeone turned it into a manager's team. This is a team... 
It's not even a team built in the in the image of Simeone. It's a club that's been built in the image of Simeone. He embodies everything that Atletico likes to see about itself. He's wily and dangerous. He's the underdog. He played football. There's this famous quote about Simeone that he played football with a knife between his teeth and he manages in a similar way. He's kind of done this journey turning Atletico, first of all, into this quite kind of brutal and cynical, immovable object. That was what brought that first flush of success. Um, and he tried in the in the last few years to to modernise a bit. And certainly when you watch them play in Spain, they're a much more attacking side than people think they are when they only watch them in the Champions League. He's never quite been able to escape his inner cholismo, his, his inner kind of essence of of being quite cynical, quite dour, quite quite brutish. Um, but he is a figure around, like you say, he's, he's stability. Simeone has represented stability for Atletico. And I think in a way that the club's never really known, to be honest, to have the same manager for this long is unheard of at Atletico Madrid, certainly since the kind of the early days of football in Spain. So he has given the, the club something to cling on to, even at this quite transformational time in its existence where where they're moving stadiums and they're becoming a bit more modern and they're becoming a bit more kind of sleek and business orientated. They've always had Simeone. Simeone is the link to the past. He's their way to the future. The big question is whether it all still works because there, there does seem to have been diminishing returns the last two or three years. This, it feels like the spending spree to me feels a bit like a last twist of the dice. Like, can you do this again? He's won two titles with, with Atletico in, with two separate teams. That's astonishing. Um, whether he can whether he can repeat the trick for a third time feels like a massive ask, but at least the club have backed him. They've given him a, a fighting chance to deliver something this season. I've always loved that quote. He played football as if he had a knife in between his teeth. I am Diego Simeone, prepared to die. Thank you to our great friends at New Balance. A brand, honestly, I think regular listeners now, I truly adore uh, the incredible minds behind the boot, giving players total control of the ball and the game. The Tekela Touch Perfected 